Hi, how's it going? Welcome to Enhancing Human Experience. I'm Mark Phillips, and this is episode 115. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever wonder about your image, the way you dress, the way you adorn yourself, and how that translates into more success in your business and your life? Well, I do all the time. And that's why I invited my guest this week to join me on the podcast and share her knowledge and wisdom about exactly that. My guest is Ruth Romero. Ruth is a professional image coach, and she specializes in helping us dress ourselves in a way that makes us feel better, presents a more positive professional image in the world, and ultimately translates to more success, and really more success in business or in life. Super excited to dive into this episode. Before we do that, let me take care of a few housekeeping type items, and then we'll get into the interview and hear what Ruth has to say about this. So really the only thing on my list here this week is I want to announce that finally I am finished with the newest addition to the free downloads at justbeitbook.com. This is a project that I've been working on for a long time and finally wrapped it up, and that is being is your superpower. I'm really, really excited to share this with you. You may have heard me talk about this in episodes of the podcast or in social media, but what this is, being is your superpower, it is a collection of real life examples from real life people who have discovered the power of being to transform their business and their life and attract more of the things they want in business and life. Really, really excited to share this with you. So let me break it down and tell you a little bit about what this is. This is a PDF you can download. It's totally free at justbeitbook.com. And inside that PDF are links to videos or podcasts, or in some cases, you know, quotes or references that I put right into the PDF. And all of those links are live links. You can click on them and jump to the place on YouTube or a podcast or wherever I've discovered someone who has found the power of being and used the power of being to attract more business, more prosperity, lovers, friendships, opportunities, because we can attract whatever we want once we tune into that and once we become that and embody those qualities. So you jump to the link and I've also given you the timestamp. So you can go right to the exact point when this person is talking about how they discovered the power of being to get something they want. Let's face it, we all want something. And the way we get that is by becoming the person that can attract those things. I'm really, really excited to share this with you. As you know, I geek out about this kind of stuff. And as I'm on my own journey, as I'm listening to different podcasts or videos or wherever it may be, I find some of them on the cover of a book. Gary Keller's book, The Million Dollar Real Estate Agent, right on the cover. He says it plain and clear. It's not about the money. It's about being the best you can be. That is one of the quotes inside that little downloadable book, Being is Your Superpower. And so you jump to the part of the interview or the podcast or the video and listen to real life people who have used this to create or attract more of the experiences they want in life, right? They they tune in to who they need to be in order to attract, you know, opportunities, money, a mate, you know, friendships, whatever you want. It'll help you realize that this really does work. So I've gathered these over the years and I keep this collection and I'm putting this into a form, uh, you know, this, this being is your superpower. Now, a couple things to remember, this will always evolve on the front of the cover. There's a version, this version that's currently up there is version 1.0. As I add more people and more, you know, content to this book, I'll change that version number. So you can always go back and see if you have the correct or the most updated version. Let's put it that way. So being is your superpower available now at justbeitbook.com. While you're there, also download the Human Beings Manifesto, which is also a free PDF at justbeitbook.com. But really excited to share that with you. And that is now currently available. So I'll be talking more about that on my social media at gmarkphillips or at gmarkphillipsfan if you're on Facebook and look for more good stuff to come down the line. So I'm thrilled to share this with you. Okay, 
let me give you some background on my guest today. So I met Ruth at the Heartfulness Meditation Group that I attend somewhat frequently, sometimes, and um, she's amazing. So full of energy, so full of life, and you can tell she you know, she puts herself together well, right? She presents an image that is just really congruent with who she is, and it is magnetic, right? You want to know more about what she's figured out in life and what she knows about style and life and the whole ball of wax. So I really was, you know, uh, excited to invite her to share her knowledge and wisdom on the podcast. And that's what we talk about in this episode. Now, Ruth is a multifaceted dynamic being, and there's a lot to cover. And in this episode, we focus on style and image. And you'll discover very quickly that she, it's not just surface level she's talking about. There's there's depth and breadth to what she's talking about. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you. For complete show notes, including bios of Ruth and some of the things she's accomplished in her life, please check out the show notes for this episode, episode 115, on my website, gmarkphillips.com. But just to give you an overview, you know, Ruth is very involved in volunteer work in the Boise area. She's won numerous awards for, you know, helping people and volunteering and business. She is a Toastmaster. She's a Professional Coaching Association of Idaho member. And really excited to share this interview with you. So a lot of goodness in this. Let's jump into the interview and see what Ruth has to say about professional image and style. Ruth, thank you for joining me today. I really am excited to talk more about what you do in the world. I think it's super awesome. So thanks for being here. You're welcome. And thank you for having me here. You're welcome. This is truly an honor. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. We, we've been chatting about getting together and having a conversation yes. for a while. And we ha- we kind of mixed our signals too, you know, so that we did. <laughs> it didn't help. But it's okay. <laughs> we it, did. it is happening when it's supposed to. It really is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you are a personal stylist, image consultant. Um, yes. I guess, you know, one thing I would like to start with is what is personal style? In, in your terms. It's a personal style. We all have it. You have it. I have it. And every human being walking the earth has it. Whether we are aware of it or not, that's something else. But I enjoy, I have enjoyed studying my own personal style long ago, from long ago as a young child, because I never felt that I was... Uh, built right, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a sister that had long legs. I always wanted long legs. So then I began reading publications about creating illusions for these things to look like I had long legs. And um, that's how it began. It was with me. Mm -hmm. Were you a stylish? So you started in childhood, it sounds like? I mean, were you into this as a child? I think so, because I look back at pictures that as a little girl, and I think I was always very conscious. I didn't stand the way everybody else was standing, but I always had a little... I've heard the comments from others, okay. I had... uh, Shirley Temple was a big thing at the time, and so I had the typical baloney curls. But sometimes when I'd had enough, I would wake up in the middle of the night, the rags were hurting me, and I would just take them off. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning, my mother would have a fit because... (laughs) I was not going to have my curls for Sunday school. And so you kind of had a little bit of rebellious because you wanted what a little more comfort over yes. looking good? Is that what? A little bit of rebelliousness is the understatement. Really? Even as a young child? So it's always been in, yes, been in you? Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So you, you st- started this personal style endeavor in, as a child and... And did it carry on? I mean, you know, what, Mark, was it going to transition? We're not conscious of these things. Mm-hmm. But as I look back, yes, I think the minute we're, we come here to this earth, we are on a journey. Mm-hmm. And everything that happens to us is the development of that journey. 
and showing us the way. We don't get it. We have hissy fits. We're frustrated. We get angry. We hurt. We become victims. And uh, sometimes, of course, heroines as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but I think I think I was always very rebellious. If someone told me it was this way, I if I could see a different possibility, I would set my debate argument in many ways. Mm -hmm. Do you think you were guided by an internal guidance more of so course. than the outer world? Of course. Do you think? Do you I think, think we all are, and as mm -hmm. children, oh my gosh, I raised. I, I raised two children, I guided four granddaughters, and I got to see my granddaughters kind of spell this particular behavior, speaking from within, and they're all different, but they all see the world within their own being. Mm -hmm. It seems like some children lose that inner guidance some, at some point along the way. What do you, why do you, how do you think you held on to it? I didn't say I was holding on to it. It was always there. It might have been dormant for a while because mm -hmm. there goes a, there comes a point when we as children want to be like everybody else, and that becomes the most important thing. Did we, you? And you went through that? Oh, too? sure. Mm -hmm. And then rebelliousness was really big time. Absolutely, it was. Uh, so I don't think it's never gone. It's never lost. We are the ones that lose touch of it. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I think is because you seem to have a very strong sense of self and a very, you know, um, expressive personality. And I think that benefits you in the world, differentiates you from other people and obviously, you know, ties into your business. Um, and that's what fascinates me is, you know, how why some people lose that sense of self or don't have the ability to express themselves you know, in the way that you do, what? Why do you think you have that? What makes, what makes that? I easy think my for you? rebelliousness you played think? a big part. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, it wasn't that I wanted to. I didn't send out an intention to be different, but uh, when it became uncomfortable, and as I've gotten older, I have realized we belong to two different worlds. We're in two different worlds: the inner world and the outside world, and the outside world does big time influences. Yeah influential to us in everything that we do, whether it's the way we dress, the way we act. Yeah. Very how, much so. That, that's, what's, that, that's another thing I want you to touch on is how do you reconcile, you know, knowing yourself and getting a sense of who you are with what the outer world tells you, tells us we should be or the latest trends? I mean, wh how, do you, how do you stay in that zone? In style, fashion, whatever you want to call it, I stick to style because that is never taken from you. That is you, the person. Whether we try to forget it, whether we try to cover up with fashionable trends, trends come and go. And you focus on those things, you will become enslaved to them. It's one thing after another. And then I see, I see women, I see men oftentimes in clothing that does not suit them. But because it's in, we feel comfortable to a point, but always that little shadow of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. When we follow trends, is that what you're... Yes. Mm -hmm. Closets, which is, you haven't asked me yet, but they tell you so much about yourself. They tell you so much. They tell me a lot about my clients that call on me. We're... It's like we're searching for that particular garment that is really going to spell us, that is really going to make us distinct. But we only, we'll put it on. We we make it. We we do get a, a, a home run from time to time. Don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. But closets, as I have witnessed them, oftentimes they even still have labels on them from the store, the, the um, labels from the sale. Because you get excited, you may be with a friend who talks you into buying it, and you look at yourself in the mirror, and you say, okay, I'll take it, but then you never put it on again. Mm -hmm. It almost sounds like you're referring to almost like an unconscious or untapped in purchase. Yes, it is. 
Because again, that outer world commands Influence. our attention. Mm -hmm. See, and, and that's why I think it's so fascinating because you know you do you do seem very congruent inner and outer and very present. And I've certainly fallen into the trap of okay, this is this type of clothing is in or this is out, but it is like you said, it's an insanity. You will chase it forever, oh, won't yeah. you? Mm -hmm. So it's very true, and uh, we can do it. We can we can get little trends, and I recommend them because I do believe in a basic outfit once you you know who you are and you adorn yourself, but then styles. Other other uh, fashion trends come into play, and you want to maybe update yourself. You can do it with a blouse. You can do it with jewelry, but it doesn't have to be a whole outfit. Mm -hmm. A scarf will bring you up to date. A blouse, shoes that fit, of course, and that you can walk in. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, functional too. Well, and you mentioned... You uh, know yourself and adorn yourself and you have the quote from Epictetus on your website. Yes. I love that. So uh, knowing yourself, I mean, is that where you start with clients? Uh, even before you go into their closets or where, where do you start with a client that comes to you? Oftentimes we meet for coffee. Sometimes they're bold and they say, no, I don't want, I don't want to meet for coffee. I just want you to come right on over. Okay. So I do. And uh, I don't, I don't utter those words to them because I think that would frighten them mm -hmm. or we would get stuck trying to figure it out. But as I see, and as we open with, closet, uh, with closets and we go through the clothing, this is what I explain to them in layman's language. And I say, you know, I, well, why, why are you going to look at my closet? I says, because this will tell me a lot about you. I usually hear from them to tell me whether they're classic style, sports person, informal, whatever it is. But that's a lifestyle. Mm. Okay. That's not a personal style. Oh, really? There's okay, a what's difference. The what's the difference? Because when... Uh, if you're a sports person, then you have a tendency you're attracted to sport clothing. I would feel uncomfortable in sport clothing mm -hmm. because it's not my style. Okay. I'm not, I'm not an outdoors person. I think I mentioned that to you. Mm -hmm. I have more of a classic formal, but I always have. I always liked to have shiny fabrics when I was a little girl. Really? And, yes. And it went along with the bologna curls, you know, the mm -hmm. whole thing. And patent leather shoes. Mm -hmm. We didn't wear tennis shoes. In those days, really, so it, yeah. seemed, so it seemed like it was a little more, like you said, more, more formal type dress. Would mm -hmm. that be accurate? Yes, but it attracted. See, there's no accidents in life. I think I was born into the right family. Yes, there was times that I didn't like it, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I had to go through a lot of changes and adju adjustments. But it doesn't matter. That's part of your growth. Because yeah. I think you're sent to the situation that is going to affect your growth and become richer mm -hmm. right? but when i see women the first thing i after we settle in and after we get comfortable i say okay let's get to work i like to work with a big mirror lots of light and they usually accommodate me quite well and then we go to the closets and then the first thing that i ask what are your favorite clothes because I know a fact, and this is between you and me right now. Okay. Women only wear 20% of what they own. 80% hmm. is usually in the back of the closet, whether we like it or not. And I would have a tendency, no, I think men are more practical about it. They're not, um, yeah, you, you just, not that you're plain, but you don't get carried away with some of that yeah. <laughs> frivolity, so to speak. Yeah. But usually when in the few minutes that I'm with a client and she points out to the clothes that she loves and I ask her, well, why? And she starts to tell me. 
And I said, well, let's put it on. Let's put one of the pieces on. Let's start off with some pants, skirt, shoes, whatever. And then we'll start. And you are going to look at yourself in the mirror. You're going to look at that image. See, I don't teach them. I don't tell them what looks good. When a woman or a man stands in front of a mirror with something that makes them feel good, they learn. Mm, wow. And then I point out the different styles. Like if you're short-waisted, you want to wear something that gives you that lengthy look on, for your torso. If you're short-legged, as I am, I told you that, then we want to have something that will give us that long look. The big boxy pants, trousers, I don't care if they're in style. They do not look good on me, and mm -hmm. I do not wear them well. I just become a box mm -hmm. with a thick waist and stubby legs. And that's, that's the description I would say about myself. But give me a trim pant that fits me well. Alterations is very serious for women. We don't think so. We leave that up for men, but no women. And we look trimmer when we're wearing the correct size. Yeah, that's one of the bits, one of the big realizations in my own journey with fashion is finally wearing the size that fits mm -hmm. me as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know. Yes. So usually when I start pointing these things out, and at that point too, I start pointing out the different parts of their body structure. And then inevitably, I will have a variety of skirts, pants, because they have, they have them in the closet. They don't wear them because they don't feel comfortable. But that's why, because they don't really look well in them, or they don't feel good in them. So we'll put them on. I said, you see the difference? Oh, wow, yes. So you show the contrast. Yes, yes. So it's a lesson that you learn. It's true coaching. Because I'm not telling them, this is what you must do. As a person, we realize that. And then we begin to embrace. We begin to accept our bodies. S women are very, very hard on their bodies. I've heard that, yeah. It's always, this is why uh, plastic structuring is very popular. Mm-hmm. And we just, you know, we're to this, we're to that, and we just don't, we aren't happy. And this is where I like to put in the, um, the spiritual end of it, because I think that addressing your body is a spiritual activity, because we are extremely beautifully made. And we don't see, we don't admire this beauty, this natural beauty that we have because we're so caught up trying to put the right garment on. <laughs> and um, I've had clients burst into tears when they start pointing out the different things that are wrong with their body. But when I stop them and I say, okay, think. Think of what your body does for you on a daily basis, day and night. You don't have to give it a second thought. I said, we're a miracle. We're magical. We really are. And we started that way from the minute we were in the womb. Yeah. And I remember this gorgeous woman, and I called her, she was petite, a beautiful artist. She found me online. She lived in New Mexico, but she was coming to Boise. So she packed up all her things that she owned oh, you're kidding. and brought them in big, <laughs> big plastic uh, boxes because she first asked me if I would work with her. She says, I only have a couple of days. I said, well, it's not going to be regular uh, re uh, redo. But I said, yes. I said, you bring me the things that are most important. She had some, she had, um, accomplished notoriety with her works and she was starting to have large exhibits and she wanted to look more refined. She didn't think that she was, but she already had it 
a lovely look about her, mm -hmm. but she didn't think so. So it sounds like so. So how did you? How did that? Well, process Well, she came go in and she. I have a big mirror in my, in the room where we we. Um, I teach them, and uh, I said, she says, "Well, I like this dress." She says, "But my butt's too big." And I said, "Excuse me." She wasn't Mark. She was a small, petite woman. But she had heard from the time that she was a little girl that she had a big butt. Mm. Isn't that interesting how things get impressed in and they stay? And it was her mother, mm -hmm. who was not slender. When she uttered those words, and I was, she must have seen my face that was kind of shocked. And I said, but you're beautiful. She broke down and cried. Mm. She says, I didn't know that. And seriously, she was a lovely, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. She just had no clue. Wow. She, had, she brought out two dresses that she had bought, but she didn't have the courage to put them on because she didn't think she was, her body was worthy of that particular style. She also, and it was interesting because I hadn't even met her at that point. She sent me a couple of pictures. She was traveling to me, and she was going for a class reunion. I believe it was a 20- or 30-year class reunion, and she needed a particular dress. I saw her picture. She described herself a little bit, and I went shopping. So when she came to me that day, I had, I think it was two or three dresses for her. But that came later as we went through the other, the other clothes that she had brought me because we took care of the, the, the matter at hand, mm -hmm. the first things. And then we talked about the, um, the dressy dress that she needed for this particular. Mm -hmm. and that, was, that was quite thrilling to me. She says, well, how did you know what my, what my style was? I said, a picture told me everything. I can tell, Mark. Really? I can tell when, yes. Yes. You, you, uh, so are you saying that if someone sends you a picture, you, you can um, tell how they could dress that would mm -hmm. suit them? Is that yes. fair? Yes, their hairstyle, their, uh, the way they carry themselves. Usually they're posed pictures, so I have to, but yes, I can, I can tell. So in addition to helping people uh, know what clothing is, feels best to them, you can also make suggestions Mm -hmm. To and and help them. That's awesome. Well, when you have very broad shoulders, you don't want to be patting them up. I can imagine. When you have large bosoms, then you pat up a shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I worked with a woman, lovely woman, businesswoman. In fact, she was a speaker, and she was full busted, but very narrow shoulders. She had a lot of clothes, lovely, expensive clothes, but they did not suit her because everything emphasized her bosoms. Mm -hmm. So on some of the pieces that we saved, all we had to do was add a little pad. And it wasn't a big bulky one like the ones we had in the 80s. Mm -hmm. This was just maybe about a quarter inch, a half inch, just to give, to frame her shoulders and then it minimized her large breasts. Subtle change. Make. We create illusions. We create illusions with a home we decorate. Mm -hmm. We work with what it, we have, and then we adorn it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let, let me talk, because I know you've done a number of uh, interesting things in your career. I, one thing that I, I want you to tell me about, if you could, is how you got involved with Miss USA, Miss Universe. Everyone <laughs> wants to know that story. And, you know, let's be clear. It was just a job that, yes, it brought me into a very glamorous world. I can imagine. And I was very proud of myself that I was able to handle it. So when I was interviewed by the president, the then president of Miss Universe, it was not Donald Trump, by the way. This happened in the uh, late... 70s, early 80s. Okay. So you know, we had an ex 
extraordinary gentleman that had started this company. We were owned by Gulf Western. It was a big, a big thing. And the um, titleists were international. So I got to travel all over. I did not have that kind of experience, but you know what? The magic of it all? He hired me on that first interview. Really? Asked me some pertinent questions, yes, and I can still remember them. He was kind of a, a stuffy gentleman, very tall, impressive persona, not the warmest. He's a businessman, an attorney, and he asked me some rather pertinent questions that told him a lot. He was very bright, told him a lot about who, what I would bring to the table. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because I never told him that after I was hired because truth be told, he was never, I was never fond of the personality, okay? Mm -hmm. But he knew I did a good job. <clears throat> How, what were you, what industry were you working in at the time? Were you in the fashion industry? Yes. Okay. I was managing a beautiful boutique in New York. I was actually in between jobs, but a friend of mine had had recommended me to this fashion boutique, women women's uh, fashions, upscale, and I used to plan wardrobes for the ladies that came in. I just I've, I have just done it. Yeah. So, so you, you, do you remember, or did you ever find out what it was that you told him or ans asked, answered these questions that made him, or did that? Oh, yes. He asked me economic questions, you know, because I was going to take a pay cut. Oh. Yes. I was making a lot more and I was on commission and which I thought was a very good question because this told him a lot about me. And one of the questions was, well, how are you going to handle this? Well, at that time, I was living in a beautiful apartment in New York, very spacious. And I, had I ever done any of these things that I'm telling you I'm going to, I'm going to tell you? No. I lived in this apartment, and I knew that my management company allowed subleasing. So I decided to inquire about it. I told you I was curious. Mm -hmm. So I did, got the answers on, on all of that and found out I could make extra money. Wow. I was going to be on an expense account. Yes, I was going to have to give up my, my living quarters and move in in this beautiful Riverview apartment. Mine was lovelier, mm -hmm. however, this was what it was. I had a hard time taking to that because I am a very private person and I didn't really want to share anything. With, but I went home and I thought about this through. And I had a couple of very dear friends from New York who just listened to me and we decided what was best or considering what I wanted. And I thought it would be adventurous to do this he then asked me, oh, I didn't answer your question, did I? I, I was going to Go make ahead. extra yeah. money. So I mm -hmm. told him, I said, I already have it planned, sir. <laughs> I said, this and this and this is going to happen. Plus the fact that my rent, everything was going to be paid for, all my expenses, even dining out mm. every single day. Wow, fringe benefits. So Yes, yeah. the fringe benefits were extraordinary. So... I didn't quite say, well, all of this is going to outweigh, you know, but I said, my cleaning, all of that, it was a marvelous package. And of course, this was when you did not have to account for those fringe benefits as part of your salary. Mm -hmm. So it worked. <clears throat> then he also asked me how I would handle the, um, the press and being out, out there because it was not going to be about me, but about my two subjects, or one, whoever I was traveling with, and then riding in limos all around town. <laughs> Sounds rough. <laughs> I always used to say, boy, I could continue living in New York City, and the first luxury that I would give myself would be a chauffeur. Sure. <laughs> and here I did it. Wow. I did it. 
So that was one of the things. And then one, one smart uh, remark that I made to him, because he was also telling me about who he, what his expectations were. And he, I said to him, well, Mr. Glasser, I said, it sounds like you are a very demanding man. And I looked at him in the eye and I said, but I know I can deliver. It's a mm. power that wow. I don't know where it came from, but I did it. <laughs> wow. So up until that time, you hadn't really... Uh... I'm 5'4", he's 6'4". Mm. <laughs> wow. But he was sitting down. We uh -huh. were talking. Sure. So, that's a, and that's I an have awesome grown up story. with tall people, so but isn't that something? Isn't, that's great. So how many years? How long? I did was it that? for four years until I was diagnosed with cancer. Okay, four years. Wow. Yes, and I I I got that as a signal. Okay, transition. Uh, my own my own doctor told me I think it's time you focus on your own particular life. Mm -hmm. It was. I it's interesting because I look back. I was running. It was an escape for me. That that working with them of is of course, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, nothing happens to you that doesn't affect you in one way or another. You mm -mm. grow by all kinds of experiences. It all goes well, in the bag, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. And I got to travel all over the world. Yeah, what a great opportunity! I got to see the people of these various countries, and it was an experience. I will never, ever forget. Working with the girls was another thing. Mm -hmm. They're glamorous, they're beautiful, but they don't know who they are other than a pretty face with a sash. Mm -hmm. And I could see, I could see this. Some were open to being a close friend, but we always had to keep in mind that I worked for the company mm -hmm. and they had to, you know, we had sponsors, very expensive sponsors, high price sponsors. So there was a, a program we had to follow. So it was a business, it was a business then. Somewhere. It's a marketing business. Mm -hmm. And they were the vehicles. Mm -hmm. And wow. so consequently it was, uh, some of them fought. They didn't like wearing their crown. They didn't like wearing their sash. And when I would turn my back during an appearance, these things would be off. <laughs> and yes, and so some of the girls just really took offense to that. Mm -hmm. And I was not liked, but I was very firm and I was fair. I was fair to all of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, thank it, you. It for, was difficult. You know, she, yeah. Well, I can, I can imagine. Yeah. You, you, you earned all those fringe benefits, didn't you? <laughs> but those that were open, which out of the, uh, let's see, four, eight, those that were, we became the closest friends. We're still friends. Really? But they were also eager to, to learn, to grow by this experience. Mm -hmm. And it was well worth it. Yeah, it's a lot. Life is interesting that way. When we want to, you know, learn and grow and better mm -hmm. ourselves, and yes. open to that. Yeah. So they were open. It sounds like one came from New Zealand. One came from the South, the Deep South, mind you, in New York City. Wow. Yeah. It's very. She stood out then. I'm sure. And and uh, there were young girls that were really lonely, but they had to either prompted by <clears throat> their parents to do this. And I could tell. So it, it was a rewarding, a very rewarding job that I had. And wow. it opened my world in many more ways than I ever, ever imagined. I can imagine. That mm -hmm. sounds so, so nice. Um, so you talked a little, little bit about the process that clients, you draw clients through and take them on this, this journey of personal style. And I'm glad you did, because I think uh, uh, when someone calls you initially with no, they have never had a personal stylist before image consultant, um, what, what do you, how do you kind of approach it with that person? Similar, similar conversation, way? Conversation, conversation, listening to them, 
you know, the art of listening is is something that we really have to work on as human beings. And, and at the same time, I tune in to what they're not telling me. Mm. The women that I often hear from are women that are approaching, well, as they call it, middle age, <laughs> late 30s, 40s. What do we do? How do we dress? Are they wanting to rein, reinvent themselves or are they wanting to find their style? I mean, what's, what, why, why did They're they afraid of being old. Is that what it is? Basically, that is the bottom line. Mm -hmm. We live in a society that really stresses youth. Mm. Yeah. And women are fearful. Mm -hmm. I think that the most important thing to be concerned about, I think, as we get older and we mature, is our health. But that doesn't seem to come into play. Yeah, it's kind of back burner too. Yes. It's how we're going to cover this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I what the world that. sees, what, what we project, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we, we kind of are a surface society. If things look good on the surface, <laughs> the shallow of surface. Of course, of course. <laughs> but think of how much more meaningful it is. Yes, it will end up being a surface finished product. But think of the joy that you will bring into that with your sparkling demeanor and great confidence about who you are. Wow. It sounds like there's a lot of depth to what you do. Yes, there is. Do they? Do your clients realize that when they come to you? Or do they, I feel like you said some of them break down and cry. I mean, it sounds like you're going to the deep core, you know, even though I they're... only go there because they take me there. I don't... Uh, you know, because when, like this young lady says, I have a big butt. I said, I don't see it. Who told you? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, she started to cry. You touched, you touched. I, I did. Mm -hmm. I hope she does something about it going forward, because I don't know. Uh, she, I lost touch of, uh, with her, but I, I do with a lot of my clients. Some of them on purpose, because they don't follow <laughs> Oh, they don't follow what they guide. had learned, <laughs> and they, they don't want if they're local, mm -hmm. but if they're away, yeah. It's sometimes hard to change those old behavioral it thought is. patterns and in, in is dressing more. patterns, isn't it? But you know, we audit those closets and we create piles of clothing, and I beg them not to rehang them again. Mm -hmm. And I, this is how I present it to them. You ha we all have a favorite charity. Someone needs these clothes. So we will part with them. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's hard to part with something that you've had. Some of these clothes represent not necessarily uh, a dress that you adore, but it was a memory. I worked with a woman once who she says, I can't get rid of this dress was the last beautiful party that I had with my husband, my ex-husband. And it was tiny. She had developed a little bit more fullness. I said, you'll never wear this again. And she put it away in the back of her closet. So she, she had sentimental value attaching to it, couldn't mm -hmm. quite let it go. But it wasn't a sentiment. It was kind of... Yeah, was it a really sentimental? It was a memory that she had with her, her ex-husband. I think sometimes those things you want to get rid of. I do. Well, yeah, in some cases, yeah, <laughs> you know, it it keeps us kind of in that space yes. and, and it yes. holds us back from moving forward, yes. doesn't it? Yes, you have to get rid of the old to receive the new in every aspect of your living. Yep. Do you think we have, do you think, uh, you talked about personal style, do you think it evolves? Or, I mean, do, do, you go, do you find yourself going through your own closet or your client's closet on a yearly or frequently basis and pruning or adding? How does personal style evolve or does it? It does. It's yours. So it changes as we change. I can put my, I can wear, I don't dress up for the gym, okay? I have a pair of gym pants and uh 
T-shirts that I pick up on sale because it's not my, my thing, but I know I have to work out. And I have comments that are made. My, my style is still there. Mm. It's the way you walk, the way you carry yourself. And your inner being is mm-hmm. always out there whether we realize it or not. Mm-hmm. I have that big <laughs> smile that everybody talks about. I don't see myself. Now, I was criticized for my big smile at one time. Oh, really? Because as a young lady, you know, and especially of Mexican ancestry, you don't smile willingly. Mm, mm-hmm. Conservative. Uh, Very much so. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I happened, I inherited beautiful teeth, <laughs> my mother's yeah, side, <laughs> or my father, too, and uh, a, a, a full mouth. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> guess what? They come out willingly. If I spot you and you mean something to me, I just give you a big smile. Uh huh. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so style evolves, and, and, and we... it's within you. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, I have, I have friends that sometimes will say, "Oh, I saw something. It reminded me of you." Yeah, mm-hmm. I wear my clothes. My clothes don't wear me. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a big difference. So you've chosen them. Is that what you're saying? I have chosen them to enhance my body, not hoping that they will enhance my body. Wow. It's an, it, they do enhance it, but they bring out who, what you're really all about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It sounds like that. It sounds like you're really, you know, tailoring, starting with the body and with, you know, the, what they want to express and helping your them. activities. There's women that live a very simple life. I don't want to be bothered. I, I want a hairdo that, that is just simple and I can ma- handle it myself and be on my way. Their clothing and Usually what we do, we start off with a basic wardrobe, with the best that you can afford. Quality. And I'm talking about a jacket, blouses, pants, or skirts, or dresses. And then from there, we build up. And you, and you also work with uh, women that are entering the workforce. And I think I saw in your bio that you work with, um, what is it, the uh, women that are maybe struggling to get on their feet back in oh, line? Dress for Success? Dress for Success. Oh, my favorite nonprofit. Is that yes. so? Wow. I have been with them for 12 years. I, I, when I came to the area, I discovered them. You know, it's so interesting. I was, uh, I was banking with this particular bank, and they had a women's night, and one of the speakers... You never know what the word will will do that you utter. The words that you utter to others, you know, mm. it, the what messages travel. And she was the director at that time. She's now executive director for Dress for Success and told us all about it. I had no idea of its existence. Really? So she invited us to the next luncheon, which was a fundraiser. I went. I loved the message. And the next thing I knew, I wrote out an application, and I was sitting in front of her and inter- being interviewed by her, and I was hired. Wow. Yeah. So you had done that for 12 years. I have. I don't do it every day. It's once a month. But we do have a big fundraiser once a year, and then we really work hard. Mm-hmm. And just lately, Dress for Success has purchased a van. Mm. And our plan is to, I won't drive it. Sure, okay. <laughs> I am going to be chauffeured around. That's right, you, but, you got the <laughs> chauffeur bug back in here. Right. <laughs> the, um, whoever drives it will always have one or two other ladies. And we're going to visit shelters mm. and visit the women who cannot come into the shop. Wow. So it's a very powerful message. And we... Our director now, Rachel Flickle, had this dream, and little by little, it's materializing. So is this van filled with clothing, and you go? And yes, we select the clothing, sizes, and we, uh, th- this is the most, uh, really a rewarding, rewarding. I can Because these women cannot afford to even uh, think of of having an advisor, let alone they just all they want is something decent to put on. Mm-hmm. But what is that? And they come in. A lot of them are very hard to fit because they're very full-figured. But we seem to have 
our inventory is made up of donations from women out there, business women that feel they no longer need a suit. Now there's a lot of positions that uh, require less formality, but I always recommend something a little dressier for an interview. Mm -hmm. what, what changes do you see in these women's demeanor after you put these? Tears for one and a glow. And of course, we have a very large mirror where they can see themselves. Mm -hmm. They're happy. They've never had anybody fuss over them. They come from really um, abusive, unfortunate situations. And they have an opportunity to find employment. Some of them already do. And they, uh, they need help. Mm -hmm. So once they get employed, we give them a second outfit. And again, it's the whole outfit, the body outfit, undergarments, if they need them. Shoes, hose, jewelry, and even makeup. Wow. We have a lot of the makeup industries that donate makeup for us. It's a total package. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like I do with my... With your clients. With my clients. Mm -hmm. And I just felt very strongly, of course, they... My, our uh, people that come for Dress for Success are delighted once I tell them, oh, I do this for a living. And then... I don't make a big to-do about Miss Universe, but sometimes whoever mm -hmm. I'm working with will say, she used to work for Miss Universe. <laughs> Their eyes light up. You yeah. know, they, It's a this sparkle. Is, yes. I mean, you know, it's a button, And yeah. it's a tool. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to make them feel good, oh, and you're going to dress me. Absolutely, right. And our boutique is something else. Someday, I hope you can come and visit oh, us. Oh, yeah. So this is where you have all of the, the, the main central... Yes. It's clothing. not very large, but it's very well organized. Most of our volunteers, we all have talents, and we bring them to the table. We have two, three, four, four decorators, and they were in charge of putting the, the, uh, the little boutique, we call it, okay, together. Okay, like interior people? Yes. Okay. The husbands help putting up shelves and lighting. Mm -hmm. It's a little room that we rent from uh, the um, some church on Capitol Christian Church, I think, on Fairview. Okay. And they the work on that little boutique is just every woman that comes in, she is made to feel special. Wow. In fact, we've had two or three that have made comments in front of me. I don't know if the others have have made a comment uh, to or have heard that same comment. Wow, this is a little store. You'd think I was on Rodeo Drive, Rodeo Drive being Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So it's fancy. Yes. Wow. Tailored. It, it's, yeah, it's got a little chandelier. You know? Wow. Yeah, and these are all <laughs> gifts that are given to us. And, you know, when you get creative people together, we create miracles. Yeah, sky's the limit then, yes, right? It's yes. all the imagination. You can have a few pieces of straw just really do do a number wow. on an atmosphere. Wow, that sounds like such a great organization. It is. And from there, after they're established on a job or in a job, we have a professional women's group, and they are invited to come. It's a support group. The director there will invite speakers in in the um, neighborhood, the community, to come and deliver a message for them once a month. So, a professional woman comes in, gives a gives a talk mm -hmm. to to the women. Yes. Wow. We've had uh, people talk and men too on personal health, financing. I uh, just referred one to them from one of my of my clients and she's been in HR so different fields and they can come and bring some of these their experiences to them that's probably very enriching for those women as well it is wow so, yeah we it, it the sky's the limit yeah yeah um talk about what's in the future for you as what well, far as projects or your personal style coaching business, image business. Have you got any new things that you're going to be working on in the future, new projects? You know, it's um, 
even even the coaching one on one, it all takes a different road. There's no two people alike, and I just bend with it all. I have uh, I have some workshops or a particular type of workshop for a local business uh, that we've been myself and another businesswoman, another coach. We're going to be putting a workshop, some workshops together. Okay, that sounds them. exciting. And uh, yes, mainly my focus will be on the value of a personal appearance mm. and what we bring to any place of employment. It's very important, especially in the sales world. I can imagine. Yeah, what you project out. How um, mm. you Talk about that a moment for people who maybe don't know how valuable it is that are listening, what your professional image is. I mean, what, what are some of the things you've seen? Well, first of all, as Will Rogers well said, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So make sure you get it right the first time. That impression tells me as an employer, if I happen to be interviewing you, or a prospect, maybe a, a client, a manufacturing business, I don't care if it's dungarees that they wear, but you're coming in as an outsider. Because remember, this clothing, this appearance that we work on, it isn't just about being fancy. It isn't anything to do with fancy. But for an employer, it shows them that you are mindful to detail and that you care. And just like you care about your person, you will care about my business. Wow. And going back to Miss Universe, that interview, I see that interview being more relevant as I coach some of these people. Really? In what way? In the fact that whatever I brought to the table, he knew that he was able to use that for the company's sake. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like people are always looking to us and at us for clues about how we'll exactly. perform. Is that and I always tell my prospects, my clients, always dress for the job you want, not the one you have. Wow. When you know that you look good, you're more confident about yourself and you'll be more confident about the company and the product you are representing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how the clothes we wear affect how we feel and, and how we feel. Yes, they it plays do. All injured. Yes, they do. It's powerful. It, much more so than what we realize. I can imagine. Yeah, and your, and your clients probably see that too once they start to have you work with them. Oh, they're never the same. They have received promotions as a result of that. I had a client once, she'd been in a lab, very bright woman, she's a chemist. And the company was thinking about a promotion for her, but they didn't think, you know, she was always in jeans under her smock and her hair was just kind of there. So she came, she was referred to me. She came to me and I remember the letter that I received from her, that her, I guess it was HR or her boss told her that that showed them how committed she was to taking on this new position. Mm. because they saw the change. They saw her evolve into the wow. butterfly that was hiding behind the smock. Wow. And, and that's very, that story sounds interesting to me because of the fact that, you know, sometimes when people know you, like you said, the first impression imprints on our brain. Yes, it does. For her to transition and reinvent herself. It's a big job. A big job. And for those people to accept it and open it and let go of that past Image. Correct, yes. Wow, for both parties, seems like a great. Mm -hmm. But that tells you a lot about the employer as it well. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, I've heard stories of um, when people want to, you know, progress in their career or want to move up, they oftentimes have to leave the place they're with because they're mm -hmm. known a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, and they have to go to a new agency to take that step up. Well, I think that's why it, it behooves us to change 
from company to another company. Yeah. It's hard to grow sometimes when, yes. when you're... Expectations die hard. Yeah. And uh, I always felt this way. You change, an, you change a career, you change an industry, you give yourself a promotion. You do it with that thought in mind. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to get out of it. Yeah, use those opportunities to yeah. step up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Life is powerful. It's magical. It is. <laughs> and it's all what we make of it. It really is. It's, it can be a wonderful journey, you know, to... It is. To, to knowing more about ourselves and, and having more fun. Wow. Well, Ruth, is, is there anything else you would want to share with the listeners uh, that I didn't ask you um, about personal style and image? Um, that you've picked up on your journey or uh, something that? Well, I see a personal style as, as I've got uh, myself some notes here. It's a personal brand that mm. you live with. It's great. Yeah, it's a yeah. personal brand. And it, it involves your character, integrity, mm -hmm. all of that. And and branding is so important. I guess it always has been, but it seems so much more so now mm -hmm. because there's so much, you know, with so much need for differentiation in the world, in business yes. or life. I think it has always existed, but it's been kind of undermined. Well, at one time too, remember, we were more formal about our existence in, in business and the corporate structure. Everyone dressed up. Mm -hmm. And now it has become, I, I guess it's through since the 80s, as technology surfaced, talent was most important. But that only lasted a short while. Mm -hmm. and, then and you don't have to be in a suit. For a man, you don't have to be in a suit to look presentable, mm -hmm. to be in style, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I had uh, dinner with a gentleman, a businessman, local businessman the other day. And I had to, I had to compliment him. On, and he was a young man. Mm -hmm. Manners, refined, young gentleman. Stood up when I approached the table mm. and pulled the chair out for me. I complimented him on his dress. He was wearing jeans, nice pair of shoes, a stripe, kind of a muted striped shirt in a pink and white, and a beautiful light blue muted plaid blazer. And the buttons matched the color of the blazer. Wow. <laughs> so I complimented him. It so happened that he had, found, he had made that choice and was was of course encouraged by the tailor <laughs> mm -hmm. who had uh, who had created his shirt. It was not off off the rack, mm -hmm. but he just took so and it, he wore it well. Mm -hmm. He took pains to do this. The details. I'm not I'm not pushing everybody to go out and find buttons to go on a shirt so it'll match your pants and, and your shirt and your <laughs> blazer. No. Mm -hmm. But it was refreshing. He wasn't formally dressed. It was to me it was a business casual. Mm -hmm. But his demeanor and his just his courteous character, it made me feel very important as well. Wow. And a young man too, so you said. Yes. That seems very yeah. thirty-five years old. Wow! So he's pretty young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, contrasts with some of the other young people that don't go to those details uh, no. and, and take. But that. again, you don't have to buy the matching buttons. But right, that's that's. What but that was his own. <laughs> yes, and that was his signature, mm -hmm. and I think it's probably the only shirt that he has that way. But it made a statement, and maybe he wore it because he was meeting with me. Maybe. I don't know. Wow. I'll never know. You'll never know. It'll always be a mystery, right? <laughs> so um, be before we wrap up, tell people how they can get in touch with you uh, to find out more about your business and you. And I'll also put that in the show notes for this episode, but just for people listening, okay. um, tell us where you want us on social media or websites. And well, right now, uh, I'm reconstructing reconstructing my website 
and it's in re- it's in repair. I think there's something going on there. I saw I, that. It looks like you're, it's a little bit different from when I went there a yes, while back. Yes. You're, you're... And um, I decided to revamp it to be a little more less verbiage because it's life is a little quieter now. And you can find me there though. My information is there is ruthromero.com. www.ruthromero.com. R U T H R O M E R O dot com. Okay. My email is also Ruth at Ruthromero dot com. My telephone number, which is my cell, and I accept uh, text on that, is nine four nine two nine one six three one seven. I have an office number, which is two zero eight nine three eight four two two zero very nice and i'll include that in the show notes as okay well, so people can get in touch with you okay that's any, fine anything else you want to No, with? i just uh, i just got to thinking that um i i have one one project that just came to mind i had forgotten about it but i have been inspired or invited to deliver a presentation for the women at the women's prison in Boise. Oh, you're kidding. This is something new I've never done. And I was invited by my fellow Toastmaster, because I am a Toastmaster. And I had, I think my message that day was rather inspirational. And he says, you know, he says, I would like to invite you to come and speak. So I said yes right away. Do you find you do that often? Is you go for the opportunity? If, mm-hmm. if it, uh, I think quickly, it's something, it, it just, something resonates within yeah, me. Yeah, you were in, inspired. And I say yes. I know mm-hmm. him and, you know, I have confidence in him. And I knew that what he wanted to do was to deliver a, an inspirational message for these women, mm-hmm. especially because they are in the process of leaving prison at that point in going out and seeking employment. Mm -hmm. And yes, I would welcome the opportunity to inspire them. How I can relate to them? By just sharing the different negatives that I encountered Mm -hmm. as I went into the business career, into my business career, which was later on in life. Mm -hmm. So that's that is a great opportunity for me. So you're gonna. So I've that's never in the been here. inside a prison. Oh really? No. Yeah, I don't know that I have either. That's it's a different, <laughs> probably going to be a different environment, isn't it? Yes. Yes. But but still, people there, right? Looking for our. You know, that's one thing that I'm grateful for at the stage of my life that I'm in. I'm an older woman, and people take a second, a second stand. You know, for just there's a certain amount of unmentioned respect Mm. for my wisdom Mm -hmm. if they so acknowledge it i think i am wise Mm -hmm. i mean i certainly have been tossed around enough that if i didn't learn those lessons i wouldn't be here talking to you (laughs) right right you've accumulated a lot of lessons and and i have i i have learned that that um hope and just knowing where of the possibilities and the purpose that you have in life can really come and lighten up an attitude. Mm -hmm. And if you don't see it, I certainly wouldn't mind sharing my own personal experiences because we all have to go through it in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no choice really, right? No, and you can call them defining moments. I went through the divorce. I went through cancer. And then a bunch of hiccups along the way as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. I didn't stay there. Yeah, I think that's what's that. That's a great uh, point yeah. to make. Yeah, a victim doesn't suit me. Mm-mm. And I don't want to be a victim. It's not very fun being a victim. I <laughs> love being sassy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ruth. I really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. And I'm so glad that we've had this opportunity. Me too. Thank you. Me too. You're welcome. Well, what'd you think? 
you come away with some ideas that you can use to present a more professional image, make yourself look better, make yourself feel better. I know that I did. If you would like to leave a comment, share your experience about the podcast, what you take away from it, what you got that you didn't know, please do so at youtube.com slash gmarkphillips episode 115. That's the best place to join the conversation about the podcast and share what your experience was and leave a comment below this video when it goes up. So I'm really excited to, you know, offer this to you and share this with you. I was, I was thrilled that Ruth joined me on the podcast. I want to give a big thank you to her for sharing her knowledge and wisdom on this topic, which is really, really important. Sometimes it's just a few small tweaks and changes we can make to our appearance and how we dress ourselves that can really translate into big, bigger impact in the world and a more congruent, like consistent impact in an image that we present. So thank you, Ruth, for sharing your expertise with us. I really do appreciate it. And that's the podcast. We're going to wrap up episode 15 this week. Thanks so much for listening. I do appreciate it as always. And until next time, all the best, health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.